All right, take two. <clears throat> what is going on, guys? Nick here, back with another video. Guys, I want to learn how to trade options. So, I haven't really talked about myself very much on this channel, but something that's always really fascinated me is people who make a lot of money. And it's not wanting all these cool or fancy things, it's more about how do they do it, and if I really tried, could I do the same thing? So, you guys are going to laugh at me, but... The other day I was scrolling through TikTok and I came across this guy's video. You might have seen his videos before, but basically he'll go up to people and he'll say, you know, what do you do for a living? Excuse me, man. I'm a comedian, Trevor Wallace, actually. Uh, I was just going to say your back tires No, you're off. just going to say, what do you do for a living? No, no, man. I've been following you. I'm a comedian. So the other day he goes up to this apartment complex and he goes to the doorman and he asks if he can go up to the penthouse. So the owner of the penthouse lets him up and he gets to the door of this nice place and he asks, what do you do for a living? And the guy goes, I trade options. And he goes into this guy's house, and he has just this beautiful house with this incredible looking pool table. He's got a champagne vending machine. I mean, this place is awesome. Go up to the penthouse. He says it's cool. I'm just curious, what do you do for a living? I'm an options trader. Now, I don't know anything about this guy in the video. For all I know, this whole video could be completely fake. But I've also heard of people retiring off of options. So my goal isn't to become this like ultra wealthy person or to retire off of options. But I've messed with them over the past couple of years and I've had some trades go really, really well. And I've also been crushed by some terrible trades. Foreshadowing. But if you're watching this video, this probably isn't the first YouTube stock video that you've seen. I just find that sometimes people give out advice and it can be difficult to implement that advice yourself. So basically what I want to do is I want to get good at options, okay? And I want to take you guys on the journey of me getting good at options. Now I'm a little different from probably your normal beginner because I do have a lot of experience with buying and selling stock. Um, I haven't really figured out exactly the format. I'm probably thinking monthly updates. I'm not really 100% sure. Um, but because this video would be really boring if we didn't do any options trades, I'm going to show you guys the chaos that I've been dealing with over the past week. So let's go to my portfolio. Okay, really random. Hang on. I promise this will be worth it. So I've been looking to get some cologne, but I don't really want to spend a hundred bucks for a bottle. Turns out you can buy cologne sampler packs on eBay. I got this whole box. There's like all these little tiny sampler book booklets in here. Check that out. <laughs> you get these little guys. If I spill this, I'm screwed. It kind of reminds me of Bod from middle school. It smells like a, like a middle school PE class locker room. I'll wear it. All right, back to options. All right, so before we get to options, let me just show you guys my portfolio. Um, this is where I'm going to be doing the trades out of. So this is out of Robinhood. Okay, so here is my portfolio. Uh, I'm going to start with my stocks just so you guys can see that and we can get that out of the way. Um, so I own, uh, it looks like one, a little over one and a half shares of NVIDIA. So it's 1.3 thousand in equity. Pro tip for you guys, don't worry so much about the actual share count. Worry about the total equity that you own in stock. The share count doesn't actually matter that much. This is what truly matters. Um, okay, so I also own 240 in Tesla. This is really just more like an experimental thing. This isn't necessarily like me trying to make a whole lot to, off of uh, $240. Um, I have a little over 2000 in Apple. I have 5500 in Amazon, 2500 times two in Google, 3,000 in Facebook. Um, I have 5.6 thousand in shares of SPY. This is an S&P 500 index fund. I got, I initially bought $10 worth of Berkshire Hathaway Class A so that I can say I'm a Class A shareholder of Berkshire Hathaway, pro tip for you guys. Um, and then I have 4,000 worth of Penn, $16 worth of AMD, um, the rest of these are all just really small positions. Um, oh, Buzz is doing pretty well. Um, so they aren't really that serious. Uh, all time returns. So this this is where it's a little painful. So I started my account in 2016. Um, I didn't start with 22,000. I actually started with about 10 or with about 100 bucks, and I increased it to about 10,000 right around here, around March of 2017. Um, and you know. 
you guys can kind of see how I've done over the time. So I was up like 3,000. This was like that whole China uh, trade dispute I went back down to zero. That's always a little painful. Keeps going back up. Three, four thousand, six thousand. Right, the peak right before COVID, I was up eight thousand, and then COVID hit, I was down to pretty much break even. And then post COVID, I launched. I mean, I was doing really, really, really well. And then I hit a peak on July second of fifty-five thousand. I was up thirty-two thousand dollars with a hundred and forty-five percent return. Then this happened, right? And you guys, that's a lot of money. Um. You guys are going to kind of see what happened here. We'll get to my option stuff in a second. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go over to AMC, and I'm going to show you guys the first move that I made. So basically with AMC, we all kind of followed what happened, I'm sure. I don't have to tell you guys about it. I actually made a whole video about it if you guys want to see. Um, so just click the link in the corner in the description wherever I decide to put it. It hopefully will be obvious. Um, so AMC launched, and... At the time, there was a lot of people like who wanted to get in on this. They thought this was the new GameStop, which it kind of was. Um, so what I decided I would do, because volatility was really high for this, right? Meaning the stock price was going up and down very quickly. When volatility is high, this means that the premiums that you pay for options is also very high. So what I decided to do was I was going to sell a put at the $23 strike price. It was going to expire in the end of August. Um, so I had plenty of time. I wasn't going to get you know messed up by theta decay if all of a sudden the stock tanked. Um, and I was going to get over 100% return. It was like each contract was going to gain me $223, and I think it was going to cost $177 in collateral. So... I ended up doing this deal. I ended up doubling down on this um, after a little while. And you can see that the stock, I mean, it got a little tight here, I guess, at 40. It came right back up. And it stayed up. And everything did really well. So I eventually, um, I closed this trade out on July 2nd. And that's when I moved over to the next move. So basically on this trade, let me just show you guys kind of how I did. Okay, so I got the first put credit spread here. Um, you can see I sold the $23 put and I bought it back at $19. Um, it was for $215. That's what the premium I was paid for this contract was. Um, and then I also opened this one, so five more. Um, this was for $23. I got in at $225. I think so. My average was $223 if you put the math together for these two. So I realized that this trade was definitely going in my direction. So on June 21st, so right about here, let's zoom out so you guys can see better. Right about here, June 21st, I decided I would get more. So I ended up taking um, a whole bunch of my Amazon shares and I sold them. Basically, I gained about $10,000 in cash and I used that as collateral. So I ended up getting 15 more contracts filled at 92 and then I got some more filled at 90. Okay, so I'm in 36 put contracts at this point. My average buy was, it was like 113 at this point for my average um, credit. This trade obviously, again, went really well. Let me show you guys where I closed it out. Okay, so here it is. I closed it out on July 1st. I closed it for a limit of 34. Um, so that means I paid 34 per contract. There was only 28 here. I closed um, the rest out, eight out earlier. I sold them for an average of 113 and I bought them back for 34. That's a pretty good trade in my opinion. Then we move on to the Nvidia trade. And basically with this, my thought was when they announced they were going to do a stock split right here, um, usually after a stock split is announced, the stock will rise. At least this is what I found when I did my Apple and my Tesla video. So my thinking was what if I buy a call and then sell a call back somewhere in this channel as it rises up. Now, unfortunately, I didn't really see the whole rise going on, what was going on with NVIDIA, until much later in the process. So I didn't really start this until the 1st of June, 30th of June, 1st of June, somewhere around there. Um, I opened on the 30th with um, kind of a small move, and then I really doubled down on June 1st with another 12,000. So basically, I bought a call 
at 785 and then I sold it back at 790 so call debt spread. I bought them for around $320 each and obviously if it hits all the way my max value is 500 So you can see what happened to NVIDIA. Basically after I made this trade NVIDIA did really well. It kept doing exactly what I expected to do. I even made this nice little channel myself so I can kind of track where its progress was and everything was good. My thinking at this point was how could I make more money off of this? So what did I do? Well basically my thought was is what if I take my call that I sold and I move it up. Okay, I get a little greedier. Well, I did the math. I was gonna move it up and I did move it up and I ended up getting an 830. I got the 875 call and then I got an 880 call. My thinking was the way I had drawn this channel, I don't wanna kinda reveal what's gonna happen, but the way I had drawn this channel, it was gonna peak right around 880, 890, possibly 900 if there's a little bit of extra enthusiasm um, right before the split. If all of this hit, I was going to take that initial $12,000 and I was going to turn it into about a $30,000 profit. So then the seventh comes and the seventh opens with a pretty big red candlestick. Okay. We had opened really high on the previous day. It kind of traded flat, but then it rebounded. We get a big candlestick on the seventh day and I'm like, oh, that's not good. But you know, it's going to rebound. It did the same thing on the previous day where you can see it kind of sold off and rebounded. Let's zoom in. Okay, so now we're really zoomed in. So we have the sixth here and then the seventh here, okay? So we can see the seventh where it opened up with this huge candlestick and it, it hadn't been that uncommon for it to open really high pre-market and then kind of trade off throughout the day but then rebound. I wasn't really that worried about this. So it, it ended up coming down and then it sold off really hard at the end of the day. And usually the end of the day selling off is not a good sign for the next day. So at this point, I'm getting a little nervous. So then the eighth comes and the eighth opens predictably way lower than I was hoping. But the other issue is, is it kind of broke this channel, which made me really, really nervous when I saw this. I didn't feel like a rebound was coming. And at this point, I'm like, I got to get out of this. This isn't good. I got to, I got to do some risk management here. So I end up selling, but then as we continue scrolling through the day, which actually is right here. Okay, so this was the end of the day right here. Um, we got this big rebound. It was like the last 10 minutes of the day, this thing started to shoot back up. And I'm like, we're back, baby. Let's go. So what do I do? I get back in. I get back in at 810 right up here. And I'm like, this thing's about to launch. I'm back in business, nothing to worry about. So on the 9th, we don't really get what we are expecting. It ends up kind of staying flat, nothing really too impressive on this day. And I get a little nervous. So I decide, you know what? This was a dumb idea to get back into this. Let's get out of this. Let's move over to puts. This thing is way too high. It's got to come back down. So now I move to a put at the 785 mark. So I need it to go below this black line right here. What I'm kind of expecting is I might have a couple ugly days, but the stock is eventually going to come back down after the split most likely. What do I need to do here? I just need to be patient with this. Let it ride and I'm gonna make my money back, not a big deal. The day goes on and things kinda of look better. It kinda of looks like there's support. It doesn't look like the crash that I was thinking was about to happen is happening. So at this point, I see this kinda of run up at the end of the day and I think, you know what? Let's get out of this put, let's get back into the call. This thing might still have a little bit of juice left. I'm not gonna miss out on this, okay? I have lost a ton of money on the stupid call trade and I got to get it back. Well, the next day opens and we're up. We get a big jump, right? Big, big open. And I'm like, sweet, here we go. So I get into this $800 call. And I mean, I'm well in the money at this point. Like, we're off to a great start. I ended up with about $250 contracts, um, about 22 of them at this point at $800. Um, they expire on still the 16th. So this thing is like going. And I'm like, we're in this. So then I start thinking, I've lost a lot of money, and why don't I make all that money back? Wouldn't it be awesome if I go through this big sell-off and I end up back where I started? So I did some math, and basically I figured out that if I got a $230 cost with a $5 debt spread, that I could make all my money back. I could be right back at break-even. So I start looking, and I find out that all I have to do is move up to 815 
which is about where the current price was. And, and I'm going to make all my money back. And I'm like, this is genius. So what do I do? I sell what I currently have and I move up to the 815 strike price. So now we got to get to this line right here. Now I needed 230 to make my full return and I got in at 235. So with things looking so good, what did I think? Let's move it up one more time. Let's go to 820. So here we are. We got the line moved up to 820 and I mean things are looking okay. We're we're kind of hoping for a little bit more of a run up than we're getting, but like things are good. We got good support. It's not falling, right? And this is what we need. Well, then today hit the 14th. Honestly, I've lost so much money at this point and it's so painful. I mean, look at my account. I went from July 2nd of 55,000 to now the 12th, I was down to 44,000. So 55 to 44. This is what I would consider one of the most painful experiences that I've ever had in the stock market. Last night, I didn't sleep that well. That's the only time that's ever happened to me where I actually felt like I lost sleep because of the stock market. I woke up at like four this morning and I was checking where Nvidia was pre-market. We get a little bit of a run up to start the morning and I'm like, we've seen this before, these big run ups and then they sell off, right? So I'm kind of thinking, what do we do here? Okay, so market opens and it opens real high and it just starts coming down and I'm like, oh no, this isn't good. So I think at this point, I decided that I'm done. I'm not doing any more calls on this. This thing broke the stupid channel. And I think at this point, it's just time to get out of this. I mean, we can kind of see it's flattened off and it's it's not coming back right now. So I switched to puts at this point. And to be honest, this entire thing was absolutely embarrassing because in hindsight, looking back at these trades, these are some of the most like paper handed trades I think I've ever had. And then I got way overly aggressive with moving up my strikes way too often. Like I should have really never done that for the most part. And then I got too concerned over every single tick on the one minute chart and trying to figure out like what was going to happen because of it, right? Where's the volume hitting? This was awful. This was, this is literally an example of everything to never, ever, ever do. And I did it with a lot of money. I did it with $10,000, which was you know, almost a quarter of my account. So I think there's two things that I really learned from this entire ordeal. If you find yourself in the same situation, this is what I would recommend is one, don't get involved into these ultra short term trades of trading a week. Like you're a lot safer if you think something's going to happen over the course of a month, right? Because if it starts to become obvious after a couple weeks that it's not happening, you can exit and you're not going to be down as much because the contract isn't about to expire. Think about your hypothesis of what you expect to happen and why you expect it to happen and don't get greedy. Don't start moving up your strike prices just because it's starting to go in your favor. Take the profits that you made. I basically YOLO'd way too much money on a weekly call option when the thing had just broken the trend that I had put down on the chart. This was just so dumb and I like I can't believe I did it to be honest. It's it's embarrassing. This trade as much as it's painful to say, is not over yet. Right now I am in put debit spreads. So right here I have 21, I have them for 7.95 and then I'm gonna sell it back at 7.90. I got 21 of them. Potentially if I can hit on all of these, and I hate to count my chickens before they hatch because I've done way too much of that this week. We can take a look at the last price, which was, oh, that's actually kinda high, 278. And we can do 500 minus 278. Okay, so this is the amount of profit that we'll end up getting times 21 equals 4662, so plus 41278. So if this were to completely hit, this would bring my account balance back up to 45000 which is still $10,000 off, but it's $4,000 more than I currently have. And I feel pretty confident about this trade. It seems like this stock has just absolutely fallen apart and it's time to get out of this selling pressure is only going to pick up once the stock splits so the next episode will be reviewing this trade seeing how it did and at the same time i'll have plans i guess for what i'm planning to do for the next month trades that i'm looking at things that i'm planning to do so i hope you guys like this content this is like a completely brand new thing for me that i've never really done before totally different setup let's all say a little prayer to the stonk god and hope that I make some money off of this because I need it at this point. This is disgustingly bad.
move on on my job. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get this 10k back. I'm gonna get it at some point. It might not be super quick. I'm getting it back. Like that, I'm absolutely sure of. Um, I got some strategies that I'm gonna use to make sure we get back into it. So you guys are going to see some of those, me trying to figure it out, me trying to show you guys what works and what doesn't. Um, so everything in this video, after we started talking about NVIDIA, was pretty much uh, everything that doesn't work here. So thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so you know whenever I upload a new video. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>